This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer. Good morning, Dan and Amy. So yesterday, the man charged now with six premeditated murders appeared in court. This is the uh, half-ass rapper Hood Rat who mowed down all of those people at the Christmas parade in Waukesha on Sunday. Uh, The sixth uh, death now, an eight-year-old boy who died yesterday, it was reported. Uh, there's and still his brother is still in the hospital. He's 12 years old. Still dozens more injured, including in intensive care. Uh, also, this just in terms of you know humanizing this, remembering the the lives lost here. Um, a friend of mine notified me yesterday. Dave Durand, who is uh, on Relevant Radio, he uh, often talks about um, motivating people in the workplace. That's sort of his space. Yeah. He's a regular guest there. He also has a weekend show. His wife, Tammy, was one of those murdered in that parade, too. She was only 52 years old, and he put out a statement yesterday about his wife's death at the hands of this monster. Uh, We uh, know that John Chrisholm, the DA in Milwaukee County, has launched an investigation into how the bail on this guy was so low, $1,000 as of Friday, uh, bail for... uh, Yet another criminal act, trying, yeah, trying to, to run down a, a girlfriend with his car. Yeah, the mother of his child. And then uh, the, two weeks before that, he tried. He fired a gun at his nephew because they got a fight over his cell phone. And he was released on bail for $500 for that. And the history, I mean, dates back decades. Yeah. This guy is a career criminal. That's what he is. And he's gotten a pass all the way up until the tragic events of Sunday in Waukesha. Just to give you an example of who this guy is, because you won't hear this very Anywhere. many other places, this guy, Daryl Brooks, this is him going, you know, going on social media himself to talk about being a sex offender in Nevada. He was charged with uh, a sex offense in Nevada, and he wants to explain to the world what the real story was. And then as soon as we fall out, all of a sudden now I'm a pedophile. Let me explain that. Ten years ago, 2006, I caught a case with my oldest daughter's mama. Yes, my baby mama. She's from Oakland. I was busting moves in Nevada. I meet the bitch. She says she want to get down, so I'm pimping on the bitch. I'll take her to Nevada. You know what I'm saying? I get cracked. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know the bitch was 16 at the time. She gave a statement to the police and told them, yeah, she was hoeing, that I was pimping, and and, uh, that she was 16, and that I didn't know that. Okay. Maybe Derek Johnson, the president of the NAACP, who elevated Jacob Rosenbaum to the status of Emmett Till. We played him uh, on uh, MSNBC this weekend, comparing the Rittenhouse trial to the Emmett Till trial. So Jacob Rosenbaum is a modern day Emmett Till, according to the president of the NAACP today, Derek Johnson. Maybe he wants to wrap himself, wrap his arms around Daryl Brooks, too, well, as another, uh, I, I don't know, uh, uh, laudable figure. Well, also, too, the mainstream media is not looking into his social media posts on Facebook promoting violence towards white people and claiming black people were the true Hebrews. I mean, he 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 put out, uh, well, in July 2020 or June of 2020, that people, white people, TF, I'm going to get you the white, good old white people. I'm going to knock you TF out, period, exclamation point. Right. He's comments on Black Lives Matter, comments on the Rittenhouse verdict, comments on Scott Walker, who on his social media post he had dressed up as a Nazi. Uh, And political racial motivations, that doesn't seem to be something that law enforcement, much less, of course, the press corps want to contemplate. For more on this, we're pleased to be joined by former Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker, now the president and CEO of Young America's Foundation. Scott, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Yeah, good morning. Wish it was under different circumstances. Yeah, we do as well. Um, what, what, you know, the uh, police chief there in Waukesha, Daniel Thompson, said, uh, one, despite the media reports, there was no chase that uh, preceded his driving into those parade goers. So that's false. He wasn't fleeing anything. That was a 
choice he made, thus the six counts of premeditated murder. You think that would register with the media. It doesn't. Um, but he also said that this is not an act of terrorism. I, I'm not clear on why this is not an act of terrorism if it was motivated by, at least in part, race and why that's a question that shouldn't be explored. Well, I think it should be explored. My guess is the chief, until they could put their case together, uh, wanted to make sure. I mean, I know when I was governor dealing with any sort of crisis, you're always careful to put out too much information until you can completely verify it. So I don't know that that necessarily means they aren't looking into it. I certainly would be based upon that's the big uh, advantage law enforcement now has is social media. You can you can see things. People often, sadly, project what they're planning on doing. But just first and foremost, just obviously an amazing tragedy. We are in a Christmas parade. My mother was one of the people. She lives in that neighborhood. She was watching the parade. She saw the red SUV go by wow. uh, about a block and a half before he, he went into the crowd. But he was already at that point moving fast along the parade route. And I know she's still disturbed about it. Talked to her again last night about it, that she thought before she even knew what he was doing, uh, she thought, what is this guy driving so fast on the parade route? He's going to hurt somebody. He's going to hit a kid or something. Little did she know what, what his apparently his real motives were. And then uh, I know for me personally, both of my nieces know have classmates who, who were affected uh, in the band and in the, who were marching along the route. It, it, it's just, amazing how tragic this is and it's up to six as you mentioned yesterday uh, but it probably i wouldn't be shocked if there were at least a, a few more because you've got some people that just barely uh, holding on to life and in, in critical care uh, are, are really in a very very difficult situation and so one i think about all those folks certainly grieve with those who are grieving pray for those who are praying for a miracle but then you look at the larger issue you're getting at is how in the world could this happen? I mean, this guy, I'm all for bail reform. I think bail reform should be going the opposite direction, though. I, I think we should actually question why do we have bail at all for someone like this? Mm-hmm. I mean, you're a multiple career offender. You're a threat to the public, the safety of the public. He already, within the last month, tried to mow down the, the mother of his child with his vehicle. This guy isn't some low-level, um, you know, someone who's on a... Um, opioid or drug addiction run this is someone who is a legitimate threat to the public he should have never set foot outside of that jail well what about milwaukee district attorney john chisholm for letting him you know freeing him three weeks ago on a thousand dollar bond shouldn't he have to pay for this somehow well, this, some way probably, yeah you got to change not just him i mean there's 125 attorneys there this is the problem you see all across america with san francisco new york uh, Los Angeles, you got to change the mindset. Uh, otherwise, just getting rid of him is like getting rid of Andrew Cuomo and expecting a conservative to step in and, in, in his place in, 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 uh, in New York State. That obviously didn't happen. We've got to change the mindset in Milwaukee and Chicago and big cities all across America and make them realize that, you know, what George Soros and others are promising is absolutely wrong. If you want people not just to live there but to visit these communities, we got to step up and say, Enough is enough. Again, it's to me, it's different if somebody's first-time offender, they're dealing with a, a drug addiction. Yeah, get them some help. But the kind of people like this individual, and I don't mention his name because I just don't want to yeah. give him attention right. yeah. uh, any more than he doesn't, you know, he doesn't deserve that. But the people like this need to be locked up. Uh, we saw this last year during the pandemic when big cities across this country were letting people out of jail. Uh, we see this push to in parole to to push for probation. Heck, you you can't talk about how how totally tone deaf people like AOC and others are. They roll out a bill to get rid of federal prisons over time, to end cash bail, to make all these other changes. That's not the answer. We've seen what happens in the worst case in Waukesha uh, in the parade, but we see it elsewhere. These images from San Francisco where people are just looting, mm-hmm. and that's what they're doing. They're looting, despite what some of the media like to say. It's, it's looting. Um, criminals uh, act like criminals and we let them out, we treat them softly, we shouldn't be surprised when they go out and commit criminal acts again. Right. Uh, the, this uh, this guy responsible for the six dead and so many more injured in Waukesha was a career violent criminal. We should add violent. It wasn't like right. he was a pickpocket. Um, uh, so it, that should have informed law enforcement and uh, the criminal justice system. But with respect to Chisholm, I mean, 
you have history with him, so you know him up close and personal, I'm sure, much to your chagrin. Yeah, he went after me in my alleys for almost five and a half years. Yeah, yeah. I was the right. Mueller case before Mueller. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. So exactly. And so, so wait. So this guy announces he's going to do an investigation into his office, and we're supposed to take that at face value. Well, it's the ultimate CYA, and and uh, I give credit to the NBC affiliate uh, in uh, in Milwaukee yesterday. I guess did a um, a bit of investigative reporting, and, and they found that this was a pattern uh, that other similar domestic violence. Uh, domestic situations where there were similarly low uh, bail offerings. And so it doesn't appear. I mean, it'd be interesting to compare what they found with whatever this uh, supposed investigation finds. Because oh. if they could prove that this was an anomaly, that'd be one thing. But again, on the surface, at least, uh, the local NBC affiliates seem to find that it indeed was a pattern, not not an anomaly. And if that's the case, that the problem you get in big cities, someone asked me about this yesterday too, is uh, to people like Chisholm, you know, their worry is not the general election. They, they worry about the primary. Right. And the primary is where they kowtow to the radical left. You know about that in Chicago as well. And so people say, how could this happen? Well, until voters in big cities, regardless of party, step up, and particularly from their, their district attorneys, their city attorneys, the people who make these decisions, until they demand something better and are willing to do something about it sadly they're going to get more of the more of the same and you're going to see continue to see an exodus of people from big cities both in terms of living in terms of employing people and in terms of visiting and it's sad because they're, you know, we want vibrant healthy uh, cities across america but if they're not safe and they don't have good schools you're going to continue to see people flee so oh, sounds uh, like uh, chicago <laughs> uh, so so in, yep. in in milwaukee county it's not doing enough in Kenosha County, it's doing too much. Uh, I'm talking about the decision to charge Kyle Rittenhouse and that saga as it played out uh, with its resolution on Friday. Um, y- your comment on Gravely, the district attorney in Kenosha County, who's been quiet as a church mouse, uh, w- w- there's no accounting for whether there's no accounting for him and the, the, the case that his prosecutors put on the decision to charge in the first place. It seems to me the thing that connects the two is politics. These are prosecutors making political decisions, not law enforcement decisions. hundred percent. Well, there's two things that connect them. One is the politics of the cases themselves. Two is the politics of the coverage by many of the national media uh, that you get. On, on one hand, they jump to conclusions that without any fact. On the other hand, they brush over the facts and try to jump to a different conclusion. Um, all of it based on this larger, you know, left-wing scenario that everything's about about race, and therefore they they actually create things about race, which appear to be the case in the Waukesha case. In Kenosha, I mean, he's obviously got an incredible um, case to be made in civil court to do what the young man did at Covington High School against CNN and others, because they went out and branded him as something that there appears to be no evidence to, to validate as a private citizen, unlike a public official. Um, he actually has grounds for pursuing on that. But, but back to the larger issue, this goes back not just to how wrong they were about Rittenhouse, but remember how wrong they were in the first place when people like the governor, a liberal Democrat, Tony Evers, and then candidate Joe Biden, candidate Kamala Harris, all jumped to the conclusion about Jacob Blake, mm-hmm. blamed the Kenosha Police Department mm-hmm. without having looked at the evidence. Once the evidence came out, the the uh, DA led, or excuse me, the Democrat led Attorney General's office in Wisconsin gave a report to the Democrat DA in Kenosha County, um, in a city run by a mayor who's a Democrat, and ultimately reviewed by the U.S. Justice Department, led by a Democrat appointed by Joe Biden, and none of them chose to prosecute the police officer. Why? Because when we actually saw other videos, we realized that Jacob Blake resisted, resist, resisted arrest multiple times, was tasered twice, got one officer in a headlock, uh, went around the side of his car, reached for what we then found indeed was a, a knife that they found, all because of a call from the woman who was uh, uh, a victim of domestic violence, and he had an outstanding warrant. So this guy, again, was another one of these criminals who resisted arrest, didn't do what he was supposed to do, and yet the entire scenario then was built on riots in the street, inflamed by the comments of liberals like Evers and Biden and others, 
They weren't peaceful protests. They were true riots where things were burning, which led to all this. If if none of this would have happened, if they would have just said, hey, let's let's look at all the facts, let's reserve judgment, let's get to the bottom of this. If things had gotten to control, the governor had called in the National Guard like I did in the past uh, when similar situations happened in Milwaukee. None of this would have happened. But the national media fueled this narrative here in Milwaukee, in Kenosha, in Chicago, in Madison, in Portland, in Washington, uh, all across the country. And, and they, t- to me, should accept part of the blame for all this. Absolutely. He is Scott Walker, former governor of Wisconsin, of course, and now the president and CEO of Young America's Foundation. Scott, thanks for joining us again. Appreciate it. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, we're Absolutely. glad your mom is okay. And he joined Thank us you. on our yeah, he joined us on our turnkey dot pro answer line. There's only one radio show in Chicago talking about today's biggest stories and telling you what they really mean. That show is this one. Chicago's morning answer on AM five sixty. The answer. Are you aware that AmericanEagle.com has been designing websites since the internet?